as we are, we know the meaning of love. As young as we are, we've learned to care. And though they won't believe it, or even try to understand, we're old enough. To face life's problems hand in hand As young as we are We know we'll always be true We'll follow the star We chose to share I'm sorry, Miss Hutchins, but... Uh, I'm too young. I'm afraid so. I understand. Thank you. Sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. My fault. Oh. Oh. Excuse me. I guess you were here first. No, you were first. Since it was a photo finish, I'll take them both. Thank you. Please be seated. Tell me you're Professor Hutchins' daughter. <laughs> I took your father for every psychology course I could. I'm a great fan of his. Oh, thank you very much. I'll tell him. Do you two young ladies know each other? No, not really. Well, you should. You're both English majors. You both graduated with honors. And I won't tell, but you're both the same age. <laughs> oh, Goodwin's the name. Joyce Goodwin. I'm Kim Hutchins. Hi. Hi. I'm sorely tempted. I, I won't say I'm not, but as much as I'd like to have you, I, the answer is no. Why? You know why, Miss Goodwin. No, Mr. Evans, I don't. Why did you decide to come to us for a teaching position? Why? Um, well, I wanted to start out in the small school system. So you chose our little desert community, in the middle of nowhere. Yes, Mr. Evans, that's right. According to this here, you're fond of theater, concerts, jam sessions, opera, nightclubs. In Rosario, Miss Goodwin, we have bars uh, and jukeboxes. You make it sound horrible. Last year, seven teachers walked out on their contract. Mr. Evans, I can assure you that we can assure you that. I know, I know. They assured me too, but that's beside the point. You are here because you're just too young. No one else will hire you. Yes, they've said that, Mr. Evans, but I don't think you or they are being very fair. There are more important things than age. I can't have teachers that look younger than the students. In my day, you would have wouldn't have poked your head out of an elementary school for another five years, at least. But we have our state credentials. We're qualified secondary teachers. I know all that, and I'm not blaming you girls personally, but they had to let the bars down. They're desperate, that's all. 
I have 25 new classrooms to fill. Then why don't you give us a chance? Because I, I have to draw the line somewhere. I know the kind of kids I have out there that grind you onto hamburger before the first week was out. Oh, Mr. Evans, we both had to go through practice teaching. My class came from the roughest neighborhood in Los Angeles. And I didn't have any angels either. You both had a training teacher at the back of the classroom with brass knuckles. Mr. Evans, I know we could handle the job. I just know we could. Maybe we'll be complete flops. But at least we're worth a try before you start squeezing 50 kids into one classroom. I don't know. You know my father. He wouldn't let me teach in a place like Rosario if he didn't think I could handle the job. Hey. All right. All right. It's a mistake. I know it is. But I, I have to fill up my classroom somehow. I'll hire the two of you. Thank you, sir. On one condition. That you stick it out until the end of the school year. And no excuses. Thank you, Mr. Evans. You won't regret it. Thank you very much. Kim, where shall I put these? Oh, I don't know yet, Mother. Well, here, give them to me. I'll, I'll um... Don't put that down flat, Bob. Well, how'll I get the lid down? Well, where, where will we put it? In the back seat. No, it'll never fit, Joyce. It's such a big bag. Look, why don't you kids let me finish this? Huh? You uh, take care of your other stuff. Bob? When are you driving up to see me? I didn't know I was expected. What you mean is you're really glad to see me go. As a matter of fact, I am. Be good for you. I wasn't asking for your advice. Grace, look at that car. I have been looking at it, Alan. They'll be lucky if they get there. Nice place they picked. Do you know the kind of rough next... Alan, please. If Kim or Joyce were in the slightest danger, Mr. Evans wouldn't think of taking them. After all, he was a student of yours. It's his job to get teachers for that gosh forsaken hole. She's my daughter. Haven't you given up yet, Dad? I have not. Now, Kim, you know me to be a reasonable man. Very reasonable, Dad, everywhere but at home. Kim, I'm, I'm still against this thing. Alan, what's gotten into you? She's backed in everything. Dad, you always kept telling me I had to learn to sink or swim on my own, and when I do try... But you're going about it the wrong way. You just don't want to leave home. Why don't you admit it? I do not. Dad, I'll write Mr. Evans that my father forced me to welch on my first teaching contract. Of course. Blame me. Go on to Rosario. Go ahead if you want to. Thank you, Dad. I said you could go. I didn't say I approve. Goodbye, Dad. I'll write soon, I promise. Good luck. Thanks, Dad. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye. Have a good time and don't worry about us. Goodbye, Joyce. Bye. Bye, Joyce. Good luck. Thank you. Bye, Bob. When he gets dead, I'll stop up some weekend. I think I'm going to welcome the change. This may sound awful, but I've never lived among ordinary people. Well, Kim, I'm about as ordinary as they come. No, I'm, I'm talking about eggheads, not blue bloods. You're an egghead if I've ever seen one. I'm not sure I don't resent that. I am sick and tired of intellectuals, especially intellectual men. All they ever do is sit and talk, talk, talk. Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, Russell, Whitehead. Freud and sex and sex of Freud. Now, the time has come to find a man with fewer words and more action. Joyce, I'm going to remind you of that. What about Bob? He's Dad's assistant professor. No, I mean you and Bob. I have been chasing Bob since I was five. 
headlights went out. Nothing serious. Clementine, baby, how could you do this to me? Yes, Clementine, and no one around for miles. It's hot. You know, sometimes these things trickle loose. Hugh. Oh. Well. Yeah. Ah, see? Um, maybe if we talk to her gently. You don't happen to know anything about rabbit punches or judo, do you? No. It's a good thing we came along. Uh, what uh, seems to be the trouble? Our car headlights went out. No, no trouble. We're all right, thanks. We're waiting for someone. Everything's going to be okay. Why don't you just get in your car and go? Because all we have to do is sort of jiggle the wire and... We're waiting for someone. Why don't you just get in your car and go? Everything's going to be okay. It'll be all right. It'll be all right, mister. You can, you can leave now. Yes, go ahead. Sweetheart. Sweetheart, you don't have to stay out here. We'll be glad to take you into town. Sure thing. Well, welcome to company. Look, uh, flash that light over this way. I'm busy. Come on, Barney. Hey, you know, you're not half bad. I thank you very much for the compliment. Hey, you're a very yeah, pretty girl. Mr. We, we don't want any trouble. We're going to be all right here. Why don't you leave us alone? Anybody ever tell you what a pretty girl you are, did Let they? go of me. Wait, that's him. I don't want any trouble, Mr. Him! Him! Mr. Him! him. Martin! Is there anything wrong here? Mister, will you help us, please? Now, what's the matter? Look, will you just tell these guys to go away and leave us alone? Please. These girls with you? No. A car broke down. We were just driving along. We were trying to help. That's not true. Beat it. Make them leave us alone, please. We don't want any more trouble. Yeah. I get it. Well, you heard them. Why don't you do what they say? You better get lost. Hey, you flashlight. I don't think we can ever thank you enough. I want to thank you, too. I know you literally that's, that's saved okay. our lives. You're welcome. Um, look, you don't happen to know anything about car lights, do you? Yeah, maybe. Well, Cle Clementine here just sort of blinked at us a couple of times and then went blind. Well, uh, let's, let's have a look. Yeah. Maybe there's something we can do to help, huh? Hey, uh, I think I gotta check under the dash. Excuse me. Hey, you hold this door for me? Find anything? Yeah. You got a loose connection. You can fix it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, check the lights now. Hey, they're on. Ah, uh, good. I don't think we can ever do enough to repay you for everything you've done for us. That's all right. Forget it. Cigarette? No, thanks. Yep. No. 
Well, how about a match? Well, I have to think what might have happened if, if you hadn't come along. Those two guys. <laughs> That's all right. Just look, uh, have a check when you get to the town, huh? Yeah, I will. And you might need this flashlight. Thanks. Well, uh, I'd better be going. Oh, uh, where are you girls headed for? Rosario. Oh, yeah? Well, those are my stomping grounds. You got people you're visiting? Mm -mm, no. We're going there to work. Well, uh, maybe I'll bump into you in town. Hope so. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. What was wrong? Oh, nothing much, Nina. Loose connection. Took you long enough. Oh, yeah? I didn't notice. require a $25 deposit for the two of you. $25? Oh, well, didn't Mr. Evans tell you that? Oh, but look, Mrs. Mc McPherson, we came here to teach school, not buy it. We're not going to walk off with your house. Well, now, that's what you tell me, and I have no reason to doubt it. But then I haven't any reason to believe it, either. Just a minute. We have house rules, and you better learn them. No guests upstairs at any time, no television or radio after 10 p.m., and no smoking in bed. Of course, all we want is a hot bath. Just have to wait till morning, because we don't have any hot water after 9.30. Guess that's yours. Crummy, huh? I think it's wonderful. It's all mine. You realize it's the first car I've ever owned? How does she feel? Just great. Go in. Yes. Oh, Kim, it's huge. It is. I wonder where our rooms will be. They're going to be in the lower basement. You can bet on it. Do you realize that week after next we're going to be teaching here? Oh, and have you thought of what we're going to say on the first day when there are 40 pairs of eyes staring at us? Oh, have I? Well, there's Joyce Goodwin and there's Newt Rockney standing in the dressing room at halftime telling him to get in there and, and to fight, 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 fight for good old Rosario High. <laughs> and there's Joyce Florence Nightingale Goodwin teaching them what it means to go into battle to sacrifice for the good, the pure, and the noble. And then there's Joyce Albert Einstein Goodwin, inspiring them to push back the frontiers of knowledge. Bravo! Bravo! Those high school kids are getting crazier and crazier. Thank you, Mrs. Bennett, particularly for the new personal achievement form. Now, let's see. We'll have each student fill out three white program forms, the stiff buff card, the green health certificate, which has to be signed by both parents, the personal achievement form, and a small office identification card. Now, we'll have the first set of white program forms, alphabetized, boys and girls together, sent to the main office. The stiff buff cards are to be alphabetized, boys and girls separately. The girls sent to the PE department, and the boys to the vice principal's office. The green health form, after it's... You know, if you're still sane, you just haven't been listening. <laughs> 
Well, enough of this. I'd like you to meet a distinguished educator, Mr. Paul Evans, our principal here at Rosario High, a man whose wisdom, judgment, and leadership have been a profound influence on this community. And if you think you've been confused up to now, wait till you hear him. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You haven't yet been introduced to our master of ceremonies and boys vice principal, Mr. Carl Peterson. I would like to welcome all of you to Rosario High School. This is the first time that many of you will have ever faced a classroom by yourselves. And I wish I could promise you a relaxed, happy experience. But, as you already know, most of our students are the children of seasonal farm workers or they live in construction gang trailer camps. They're often sullen kids, bitter kids. Sometimes you'll ask yourself why we bother to educate these eight balls at all when there are bright students eager to learn. When you ask yourselves this question, don't forget this. It is the emotionally deprived children a turn into enemies of society. The countries that don't try to advance the lowest sections of their population are inevitably run over by them. I hope to see all of you next June. But I know from personal experience that one out of three of you will break under the strain and leave before the year is out. To those of you who remain, remember that the best teachers in America are made out here in places like Rosario, not in the comparatively soft births of big city school systems. Oh, I've been talking too much already. School convenes a week from Monday, 8 o'clock sharp. See you then. Good luck. Goodwin, you have a gentleman caller. I had a hard time finding you. After all, we have two boarding houses in this town, you know. How'd you know my name? Got it off the registration tag. Um, oh, uh, this is Kim Hutchins. Yeah, so that's your name. And you're... Hank Moore. Well, nice to meet you. Oh, uh, Kim. Uh, excuse me. Um... What are you doing tonight? Oh, well, you will excuse me, won't yeah, you? Yeah, sure. Have some unpacking sure. to do. You busy? Well, no, I, I, I sort you of. You ever been in this part of the country before? No. Well, I'll come by later, take you out to dinner, and show you around. Oh, thanks, Hank, but I can't. Well, why not? Well, I, I was planning to have dinner with Joyce tonight. Well, break it. Oh, no, I don't. Think Good. I'll see you around nine. I'm glad you came by tonight. So am I. Hi, Hank. Hi. How's the cotton? Coming good, Jessup. Do you work on a farm? In a way. What way? I run my mother's place. We have 300 acres just south of here. She hasn't been any too well since my father died. I was a kid then. I'm sorry. That's okay. You'd like our place. I bet I would. What do you do? I'm a school teacher. A what? I came up here to teach at the high school. Oh, now look. 
Just because I'm a school teacher doesn't mean I'm square. Let's dance. Okay. Yes, we better go. Okay. Gonna see him again. I don't know. He, he comes barging in here, and I'm beginning to wonder what kind of a girl I really am. Oh, Kim, I should have troubles like that. No, I'm serious. Oh, look, you came out here to get away from your family, and Bob certainly isn't encouraging you. Well, I know what I said, but. Don't seem like a school teacher. How do school teachers act? Well, I don't have anything against them, but the only ones I knew anything about were retired old maids, that's all. Not being very fair. People expect us to act in a certain way. so fast. You know, we've been out every night this week. I haven't had a chance to think. Need an explanation for everything?
only me, Mrs. McPherson. You don't have to wake up the whole neighborhood. Better go. I'll see you tomorrow. No, school starts tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow night, Phil, in a while. Kim. Skip it. Good night. Hi. Yeah, we're supposed to put those up now? You don't have to yet. I just wanted to be doing something. <laughs> you do. Oh, my stomach just keeps doing flip-flops. Well, who's it gonna be? Huh? Albert Einstein or Florence Nightingale? Oh, enough, enough already. I feel bad enough as it is. Oh, am I scared? I am too. I'm terrified. I'll be all right if my knees will just stop shaking. They keep on tapping out SOS and Morse code. Oh, good luck. Good luck. Excuse me. My name is Nina Cook, and I'm on the student council. We were asked to help out the new teachers. Is there anything I can do? Yes, thank you. You could pass out the program. Excuse me, is this life science, too? No, you're in the English. for quiet. This is senior composition, and my name is Miss Hutchins. <laughs> Before we do anything else, will you please fill out the three sets of cards that are being passed to you? Print in ink and don't leave anything out. And what do you do if you ain't got a pen? <laughs> Get one. Yeah. You can use pencil for, for today. Hey, wh what's the date? Smell, can't you read? <laughs> September 15th. What's that boy's name, Nana? Roy Nielsen, Miss Hutchins. He was supposed to graduate last year. <sighs> Thank you. Oh, Miss Hutchin. In this class, we raise our hands. <laughs> yes? Do you want us to fill in the teachers' names? <laughs> I said everything, didn't I? Well, I don't know their names. What am I supposed to do about that? Well, if you can't follow simple instructions, maybe I better send somebody back there to help you. <laughs> You do look a little lost. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind being lost if maybe you and me could play hide and go seek. <laughs> Sit down. Now, I want this class quiet. If I hear another word out of you, you'll be playing it with the vice principal. 
Now get that gum out of your mouth, both of you. That goes for all of you. Now I want these cards completed and I want them completed in silence. They uh, registered us in American literature by mistake. We're uh, supposed to be in here. Well, uh, don't you want us to sit down? Oh, uh, yes, take a seat in the back for the time being. Boy in the back seat. No, the, the one who just came in. Me? Yes. Would you please come up to the desk and pick up some cards? I think there's been some mistake. Yes, ma'am. I'll go down to my great advisor right now and check out. I tried to tell you before. Just leave. Class, we're on a short schedule. Work as quickly as possible. Those in the back can begin collecting cards as soon as they're completed. Whatever has happened to Hank? Well, he was in the wrong class. I see. Sit down. No one leaves this class without my permission. All right, class dismissed. You'll get along fine, Miss Hutchins. You have all the kids on your side already. Thank you, Nina. awful headache. Oh, it's psychosomatic first day, Itis. Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, boy, you should see my fifth period class. You know, their average IQ is 120. They make me feel inferior. That's good. Oh, you know, but you should see my third period class. Wow, my knuckleheads were complete, absolute knuckleheads. Never have I seen such stupid people. Joyce, please, not now. Well, gee, Kim, I'm sorry. Come in. He's here in person now. Who? Tell him I'm not in. I've already told him that. Tell him again. Who is it? I don't want him to come here ever again. Well, you just better not change your mind, my girl, because I'm not climbing those stairs again. Let him down easy. Let him down easy. Let who down easy? What are you talking about? Anyone absent? Oh, no, Miss Hutchins. Just Larry, and he's at band rehearsal. I'm glad they elected you class secretary, Nana. Yes, ma'am. Is anything wrong? No, Miss Hutchins. Are you sure? Yes. Well, don't be afraid to talk about something that's bothering you. It does help.
All right, Roy. This is our third day in class, and by now you should know that when I give an assignment, I want it done. Yes, ma'am. Just resting my eyes. Anything wrong with that? Get back to work. Hi. Kim, I'm sorry to break in this way, but I can't find my instruction sheet. What do we do with these things anyway? Oh, you separate the boys and the girls' cards and send them to the health office. Yes. Kim, have I got news? I'll tell you all about it tonight, huh? Guess what we might call for this morning? Guess! Look, who's the nicest guy around this school? Joyce, I'm running a class. Okay. Well, Carl Peterson, that's who. And he asked me out tonight. The vice principal. Oh, Joyce, that's wonderful. Okay, I just couldn't keep it to myself. Thanks for the info. Right. Couldn't have seen me yourself. Did you have to send the landlady? Hey, please. Look, there's another class in the fourth period. Can't you register in that one? I tried everything. The counselor said she wouldn't change my program unless the principal personally ordered her to. All right, Mr. Moore. Find a seat in the back. We're paraphrasing the poem Thanatopsis, page 54. All right, class, how many have completed the assignment? All right, if the rest of you don't finish before the end of the period, do it for homework tonight. I'll collect the papers tomorrow. Go forth under the open skies and listen to nature's teachings. What garbage. <laughs> how dare you disturb the rest of the class just because you don't happen to like something? Nobody likes it, Miss Hutchins. We don't go for that poetry stuff around here. That's strange. Why? Well, class, why don't you even give yourself a chance to like it? Well, when we want our kicks, Miss Hutchins, we don't go to no poems. Well, that's because you don't understand it. Well, I'll take the solid beat any time. Yeah. Class, I want it quiet. We have to have poetry sooner or later because it's in the course of study. Later. Much later. <laughs> Sit down. This is my class, and I'll handle the discipline problems myself without any help from anyone else. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. All right, class. I'll let you decide yourself whether we'll have poetry now or not. All I ask is that you just sit quietly and listen to this. This is by John Donne. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a cloud be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. And therefore, never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Give that guy one bell to get lost. <laughs> All right, Roy, we've listened to your objections. Now maybe you'll be a good sport and go along with the rest of us. All right, class, let's get back to work. Hank. Well, I've been okay. How about you? Just fine. I thought maybe I'd hear from you. Yeah, well, it's just that I've been hey, hi, How are you doing, Jay? I talked to your mother last night. She told me your arthritis was still the same. Yeah, yeah, it is. Am I going to see you this weekend? Well, 
No, I don't think so. I don't. If you're busy, I can come into Rosario and meet you. Well, that is, if you want me to. Well, yeah, I'd like that, but it's well, it's just that I'm going to be tied up. That's all. Look, I gotta go. I didn't mean to keep you, Hank. Look, it's not that, man. You see, I I meant what I said before. I mean. Look, don't count on me too much anymore, will you? Come on, Nina, or we'll be late. Still sitting there, huh? Mm hmm. Kim, I don't think you should be alone tonight. I'd rather be. But it's not going to do you any good to sit and think. Why not? Because if you're anything like me, you're going to be kicking yourself right around the block. Maybe that's what I should be doing anyway. I would have sworn he was at least 25. Joyce, I'd rather not talk about it now, please. All right. I was only trying to help. I know. Thanks. Well, that's Carl. Oh, look, for the last time, will you please come with us tonight? Um, well, maybe we can stop by later and we'll all go out for coffee, huh? Just like that. Why didn't you see me yourself? Why didn't you tell me? I wanted to. I even tried to. Anyway, you wouldn't have seen me if you knew. Isn't that I right? No, I don't know, Hank. But look, I don't want to talk about it now. I want to talk about it. I know you do. But I've got to think. I'm not ready to yet. What's there to be ready about? We know how we feel. Isn't that enough? You don't know how I feel, Hank. I don't even know myself. I don't believe you. Look, you just couldn't change like that. Look, what about last night? And the night before? Oh, I want you so bad, Kim. I don't want them to know you're here. You're coming with me. We'll talk to Silver no. now. Kim? Kim? Kim! That's Hank Moore's pickup. That jerk? Who's that with him? She looks kind of familiar. Who cares? That'll be 380. Why are you stopping for gas? We're not going anywhere. You're not walking out on me. Just because you got a few years on me and, and, and teaching that crummy school. Hank, that has nothing to do with us. Just okay. say the word, I'll quit school tomorrow. Oh, no, I wouldn't let you do it. That would be my fault. What are you trying to do? Oh, Thank you, sir. Roy, look at him. All right. I'm taking you home. But I'm not letting you go. Tell us how an appositive is punctuated. No, I can't. Cynthia? There's a comma before and afterwards. That's right. An appositive is set off by commas. Class, what is this? You're pretty noisy today. Now, come on, let's just relax. Roy Nielsen? 
Don't do it, Roy. Marge, there's no point in telling him the answer until I've asked the question. Can you give us a few examples of an appositive? Well, let's see. A beautiful doll, like yourself, at Brent's gas station. <laughs> That's not an appositive. I think you better sit down. What, you're going to give me another chance, Miss Hutchins? No, I'm not. I said How sit down. How about this chick was with this young cat in a truck? Sit and were they having moment. themselves a ball? Yes, I want it quiet. This cat is none other than... Get out of the room. Well, I'm I just trying to give you those appositives, Miss Hutchins. Moment. Okay. Now, Cass, I want this, this assignment done in silence. Roy Nielsen will return. Yeah. If I hear another word from any one of you, I'll send you to the vice principal's office. Nina, take names while I'm here. <laughs> I'd like to know why you did that. Did what, Miss Hutchins? All right, Roy. Report to the boy's vice principal. I was at the gas station, Miss Hutchins. Did you hear what I said? I don't think you'll send me down to see Dimples. I just don't think you will. For the last time. Lucky, you don't scare me, Miss Hutchins. I wasn't alone. I've got witnesses. If you think you... Report to Mr. Peterson immediately. As far as I'm concerned, you're no longer in senior composition and your grade is F. Well, Miss Hutchins, I didn't mean to... Did you hear what I said? Now get down there. All right, class dismissed. Oh, yes, Nina. Do you know what they're saying? Yes, I think so. Well, why don't you tell them it's not true? Nina, there are some rumors that don't deserve a denial. Why should they say that about you? I don't know. Look, I must get down to the main office before the next class. Please excuse me. Miss Hutchins, I think that it all started because Hank is in love with you. Nina, love's a very mixed up word. I know what I'm talking about, Miss Hutchins. I went with Hank. The way he looks at you, he, he can't even take his eyes off you. He doesn't want me anymore. Nina, let's talk about it very soon. When we're both feeling better. Jeffels won't say a thing. Man, when he hears the word, he'll just sit there stoned. Yeah, he won't do a yard in it. Hello. I, I wanted to see Mr. Peterson, please. He's in talking to Mr. Evans, but if you'd care to wait. No, no I have a class. I'll be back. Empty your locker, bring your books back here, and the lock. And you better be back within three minutes. Get your next period class, Hank. I'll tell the coach. Yes, sir. Can I help you, Miss Hutchins? Yes, please. I, I wanted to ask about Roy Nielsen. He's been expelled for two weeks. And he won't be allowed to return to your class. 
He deserves it. And uh, Hank Moore? What about him? Well, he did start a fight. He's been barred from football for the school year and dismissed from the student council. Oh, I see. Thank you. Mr. Evans would like to see you. Oh, well, I have a class. I know. I'll have it covered for you. I'm sorry, Miss Hutchins, that you couldn't have joined us last night. Perhaps all this might have been avoided. Come in. You sent for me, Mr. Evans? Yes. Please, sit down. Thank you. You've heard about the two boys? Oh, yes, Mr. Peterson just told me. I have no right to pry into your private life, Miss Hutchins, and I'd prefer to believe that the rumors are untrue. However, you are aware that we face a delicate situation. I am. In a small town like this, where people have very little to do, rumors sometimes turn into very ugly things, not just for you personally, but for all of us. Yes, I can see that. I'm having Hank Moore transferred out of your English class, if it meets with your approval. It does. You can see how the rumors got started, Miss Hutchins. You're a very attractive woman. However, in the future, I'm asking you to exercise greater caution. I intend to do that. Well, in that case, we'll consider the incident closed. I, I want to thank you. Yes. Well, telegram came for you. Oh, thank you. There are a lot of tongues wagging about certain goings on, Miss Hutchins. Are there any? Well, let's let them wag. Let Miss Hutchins, I run a respectable house. Hope it's nothing serious. It's from Bob. He's driving up tomorrow. Don't you want to see him? No, not yet. Everything's in such a mess. I know how you feel, but it's all over now. Do you want? I want to see Kim. I'm not those stairs. I've got to go and see him. Kim, don't go down there. Nettie will see you with him. Well, let her. I'm not going to let you do this. But I've got to. I didn't want to have to tell you this, Kim. But this afternoon, they were ready to ask you for your resignation. My resignation? Yes. But I thought that was all cleared up. Roy Nielsen came back after school with his father. They even had Marge in for questioning. She saw it, too. Oh, I see. Mr. Evans has decided to give you another chance. But he thinks you've put an end to it. Oh, I have put an end to it, believe me. But, well, what can I do? He won't leave unless I see him. Kim. He'll leave, all right. Oh, don't be harsh with him. He doesn't deserve that. What are you trying to do? Give my place a bad name? He pushes his way in here and he won't move. All right, Nettie, leave him to me. All right. Just close the door behind him. Where's Kim? She can't see you. Why not? Look, don't you have any sense? She was almost fired this afternoon. I want to see her. She wants you to leave. Where is she, in her room? Do you have to be hit over the head? Kim just isn't interested anymore. Yeah, well, I don't buy that. Her boyfriend is coming in tomorrow. Why don't you just exit graciously? I want to see her. Hank, you take one more step and I'm going to call the police.
not running away from me anymore. We're going to talk this over right now. Hank, I don't want to run away from you now, but this isn't the place. You know how many times I've been to your house? Yes, I know. I haven't been fair. Well, what's wrong? Wasn't I man enough for you? No, it's my fault. I'm the one to blame. No, no, no. I should have never come to this lousy school. My being your school teacher has nothing to do with oh, it. No, no, you're lying. You're, you're just scared and you're chickening out, that's oh, all. It's just that feelings I, I never knew existed. You may not believe it, but this is the first time I've ever lived away from home. I, I never had a chance to go out like well, other look, nobody do. would ever know about us. We could go on. Hank, you're not listening to me. Don't you understand? I used you. It's true. You got to know that whatever I felt for you, I know now it wasn't love. I don't believe you. Oh, look, Kim, I want you to marry me. Look, I built you a new house. I'll work for you. Hank, it can't be. You love somebody else? No. That's Mr. Evans. He's expecting me. I, I've got to go or he'll be up here. I don't think very much of myself right now. your mind. Turn the car around right now. Stop the car. That's a good way of getting killed. If that's what you want. I don't care one way or the other. on the whereabouts of the missing Rosario High School teacher, Miss Kim Hutchins, who was last seen this afternoon. Missing two high school boy, Hank Moore, a student of Miss Hutchins. There are conflicting rumors about their disappearance. Authorities are investigating the possibility of foul play. And now for the weather report. Hank, do you realize the police are after us now? That's why I'm taking the back roads. But that's kidnapping. Well, not if you marry me. I couldn't even if I wanted to. You're a minor. Who's going to know that? Hank, I'm not worth all this. No one is. Don't you understand what you're doing? You don't want to marry me. You're trying to get back at me, to hurt me. Is that worth going to jail for? Stop talking to me like I was one of the kids in your classroom. That's him, all right. Car 43 to control one. Car 43 to control one. Go ahead, 43. 54 sedan, JVC, John Victor Charles, 290. Moving east, Old Cusero Mine Road, leaving Yucca Pass and moving into the Granite Mountains toward Kelso. 10-4. Stop the car. Leave me alone. Just sit there. But Hank.
Control 1 to Unit 2. Intercept 54 Sedan, JVC. Unit 2, standing by. If you really love me, stop the car. You tell him you'll marry me? Will you? Stop the car. Answer me. No. I'll kill us both before I let you go back to him. Oh, no, Hank. No, there isn't anyone else. Please listen to me. Will you say yes? Will you? Harry. Don't let me do it. Hello. They're okay. Call the sheriff. Tell him to get a wrecker up here right away. And that's the whole story. From the first time I met Hank Moore until, well, until you found us. Well, from what you tell us, it still comes under the legal uh, definition of kidnapping. I don't care. I refuse to file charges and I won't testify against him. Well, of course, if you're going to do that, we can't hold him on it. What's your feeling on it, Mr. Evans? I concur with Miss Hutchins. Up to now, the boy has had a perfectly clean record. He's been a good athlete and a fine student. It's true, he showed poor judgment, and certainly his feelings got completely out of hand, but there was no premeditation or a attempt to extort money. You're forgetting he had a gun and was ready to use it. But when it came to the point, he couldn't do it, Captain. The boy is no criminal. All right, I'll go along with that. But he'll still have to stand trial for reckless driving and illegal possession of firearms. You understand that? Yes, sir. You almost killed the young lady here, and the two police officers, not to mention yourself. All right, folks, that'll be all. Thank you very much. Kim. Before we go out there, I'd, I'd like to talk to you. All right. I guess you want my resignation. You kept your part of the agreement. You stayed away from him. I'll keep mine. But this will get you in a lot of trouble. That's my concern, Kim. You just take care of your classes. Oh, no, I don't think I could face them again. Not after all this. When I hired you, Kim, I figured you would be too young to do much more than make a complete fool of yourself. But I never believed that a bunch of kids could hoot you out of town. Kim. I'm sorry. You don't have to say anything. I understand.
Kim, dear, we've got everything taken care of. Bob's going to drive you back to Los Angeles, and your dad and I will get your things and bring them home in our car. Let's go, Grace. Kim, if we don't get home early enough, why don't you and Bob go out to dinner? That's a fine idea. How about you? Goodbye. Drive carefully, Bob. said you could take my truck. Nobody. Car's over here. What's the matter? I'm not going. Tell my parents to leave my things where they are. I'm staying right here. I think you're right. I'll tell them. Thanks. Kim, will you be making a visit to L.A. soon? No, I don't think so, Bob. There's nothing to prevent you from coming here, though. Is there? Not a thing. Good. See you. Goodbye, Bob. <laughs> 